how were you diagnosed, Kerry? How, how did somebody realise that what you were experiencing, experiencing was this actual condition? Tell us about that. Well, from the age of 17, I was put on uh, many antidepressants, uh, especially from the time of joining Atomic Kitten. And I was doing drugs, as everybody knows, and I went into the Priory and my doctor, my psychiatrist, diagnosed me with bipolar. And it turned out to be quite a common thing with a lot of people, mental health people who turn to drugs. And uh, when I got the diagnosis in 2005, I mean, I, I cried. I didn't know what bipolar was. I thought it was some kind of sport. I honestly did not have a clue what bipolar was. But I was so grateful that there was, that, that there was a word for it, <clears throat> excuse me, because I thought I was going mad. You know, I, I wasn't able to sleep. Even now, my sleep pattern, I'm very hyper. I get very manic. I have really manic episodes and these can last for weeks and then and then i come crashing down and that is almost like being on a drug itself that is they're the traits of being on some kind of drug anyway but when i got the diagnosis i was relieved even though i didn't know what bipolar was but my mum was diagnosed with manic depressive which was the same thing but it's now called bipolar and then i went on lots of different medication which they call it trial and error to find the right kind of dosage for your manic and depressive episodes. And uh, there was a very famous interview where because of my medication, it makes your speech very, very slurry because I can be very, very manic and things are 100 miles an hour in my head. I'm very animated, um, but I'm on no medication at the moment. OK, and, and, and is that, that's your choice then. Does it, does it dampen how you feel? And I ask you that because we look at people like um, Kanye West, for example, who's very publicly mm. been having displays of bipolar recently, these long mm. um, episodes. Um, but also many people say he's a genius. And, you know, today is the day for World Bipolar Day because Vincent van Gogh, also a creative genius, um, had bipolar. Um, and are you afraid then of taking the medication because you'll lose some of the, the benefits of it? For me, I've had such a bad experience with my medication. Um, years ago, I, I did a, a TV show this morning and my speech was really, really, really slow due to my bipolar medication. I'll, I'll admit I've done drugs, I'll admit I've drank, I've done all that, I've been clean for 13 years, I have no reason to lie. But all those years ago, we wasn't aware of mental health. No one spoke about it. We live in a society of us Brits. Say, oh, pull up your socks and crack an old chap. That's the kind of society we was living in. And because my speech was slur, I got asked if I was an alcoholic. And I was like, no, I have an illness called bipolar. I'm on medication. I was never once asked, oh, OK, all right, OK, what medication you are? And explain to us what bipolar was. Nobody asked me that on national live television. And for 10 years, I was crucified for it. You know, people thought I was some crazy lunatic who was doing drugs and drinking. Um, and for me, I've had such bad experience that I've tried to... I've had to educate myself on, on my triggers and what tools to use for those triggers. By all means, like many people out there with bipolar, I love the manic episodes. I love, I love being very hyper and giddy and excited, but you do come crushing down. But I also know what tools to use for those episodes as well, if it, if it gets too yeah. far. But also what I really want to express today on Bipolar Day is that you, you, you can have a great life. You can't be like everybody else. You know, I'm really successful. You know, I have many businesses. I'm an entrepreneur. It doesn't mean because I, I'm bipolar that I should be tarnished. You know, I'm a really nice person. But because uh, you, you, there's so many... I mean, Eamon will tell you what a lovely person I am, won't you, Eamon? You are lovely. You are lovely. <laughs> I've had some lovely conversations with you down, down through the years. And I think the thing is, what you're saying, Kerry, is if it's diagnosed, if you get understanding, if you get people to say, actually, this is what's affecting you, this is what's wrong, and hopefully that is the point of World Bipolar Day. And also, just be really clear, just because I don't take medication doesn't mean that's right for everybody else. Yes, I yeah. mean, a few years ago, when my daughter's daddy passed away, I went back on medication yeah. because I was able to ask for help. And it's so, so important to ask for help. You know, it's OK not to be OK. Life isn't unicorn and rainbows. 
<laughs> and because I, people might think I live this amazing life, I struggle every single day. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I've I educated myself really well, but there might be times I might have to go back to my doctors and say, look, I, I need some help. I need to go back on medication. That is okay. You know, we can't all just live you know, these amazing lives, especially with social media now, yeah. Amy, and everyone thinks that, oh, my life should be like that. Why is my life, especially my teenagers, that worries me so much. Yeah. That isn't life. It's all fake. It's all false. People only want you to see what they want you to see. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very open and honest about my struggles that I have. And I think that's really important today with somebody with my platform to let people know that it's okay not to be okay. And if you are really struggling, please ask for help and don't feel like a burden because it's so important that, you reach out and get the help that is needed and there's Harry, a lot of help that out there that you can get. Appreciate you uh, speaking like that and hopefully it will help other people yeah. to, to recognise and us to recognise yeah. what they're going through.